Hello everyone, uh, Ori Bloop here. Welcome back to another Game Builder Garage tutorial. Um, today we have a game select menu. So uh, if you have multiple games and you want to compile them in one project, uh, this is the uh, you know tutorial for you. So uh, here's a little brief demo. Uh, we have the screen here, and if we move the uh, down D-pad, we can actually go ahead and uh, choose which game we want. So we have game one, game two, and game three. And of course, if you uh, press the down D-pad again, it will uh, go back to one. So uh, it's a really fluid system, and uh, it's actually not too difficult to make. Uh, but let's go ahead, and if we press A uh, on game one, we will go ahead and be sent to a game. And there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, make this all right so the first thing that we're going to actually do is we're going to make the um the physical system where it changes uh where you can change the game from one to three uh i've used this system before actually uh featured on my channel and other tutorials but uh it uses a counter and uh comparison uh nodons and it actually compares with uh different constants so what we're going to do is go to middle and we're going to grab ourselves a counter and then what we're going to do is go to middle and we're going to grab three comparison nodons. And then we're going to grab uh, three constants. And we're just going to copy those just like that. Okay. Uh, we're going to just clean this up and make it uh, organized. So we're just going to stack each of these on top of each other. So the first step we're going to do is um, since there are three selections in our... Um, in our different games, uh, we're gonna actually uh, show this with our constants. So for constant one, we're gonna have an output of one. For constant uh, this one, we're gonna change it to two. And then we're gonna change the last one, of course, to three. So now we have uh, different constants, one through three, and we're gonna actually show this uh, with comparisons. Uh, so we're gonna connect the first one to the input two, the second one to input two, and then the third one to input two. So these are all connected to their individual comparison nodons. And now what we're going to do is, uh, since we have one, two, three, we need a system where it shows that on the counter and it can compare it to. So we're going to edit this counter a little bit. If we go into the settings for it, we can change it to loop because it's going to be going one, two, three, and then we want it to go back to one. So go to loop. And then since there are three options, we're going to change it to four. And the reason why we do four is because uh, four actually isn't counted, so it will just go back to zero. But the thing is, we don't have a constant of zero, so we're going to actually have to change the zero to one. So basically what happens here is it will go one, two, three, and since it doesn't count four, it will go back to one. So one, two, three, one, two, three, it will just keep going like that because uh, it's in a loop. And then, of course, the count timing, we're going to have to change from on change from zero because uh, we don't want it to continuously count uh, when we're pressing the button. And now all we have to do is uh, uh, do the counter and connect it to all the individual input ones for all the comparisons. Uh, and now what we need to do is add a system to either count up or count down. Uh, since this is going actually uh, downwards and we're actually uh, going up when we press down, we're going to actually have to use the D-pad down to count up. So what we're going to do is go to input. And um, if you guys see, there's no D-pad buttons here. All you have to do is go to A uh, or you can go to anyone and then go to settings and you can change this to uh, either uh, whatever kind of uh, button you want. So we're going to go to D-pad down. And we're going to go ahead and make a D-pad up. Oh. So we're going to go ahead and make a D-pad up. So we have up and down. So for the down, um, like I said, we're going to be needing a down for count up. And we're going to be needing a D-pad up for uh, count down. So now, uh, if you guys can see, uh, if we go ahead and press the D-pad down, it will count to two. And then if we press it again... It will count to three and then if we press it one last time it will go back to one and of course you guys can do this for however long and it will just be in that loop um and what it's doing here is uh when we go to one uh this comparison will give an output because uh these are the same 
uh, if we go down again, uh, it will go to 2. So now uh, comparison to constant 2 will give an output. And of course, if we go to 3, it will uh, be the same for constant 3. And so now we have the basic system of uh, basically switching games. Uh, now we're going to actually add the visual side of stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is go to objects and we're going to grab, a spe go to special objects and go to text object. So we're going to go ahead and make this a little big, just like that. Can make it probably a little bit smaller. Okay, if we go into the settings, we're going to just change the text object uh, to game one. Of course, um, oh, of course, I expect you guys to change it to uh, the name of your guys' games. Of course, you guys could do whatever you want. Um, it's completely up to you. Uh, but now, since I have game one, uh, we're going to go ahead and change some of the properties. So uh, this is not going to be movable, destructive, or destructible. And um, let's go ahead and see. So for size, uh, we're going to actually make this 0.10 because uh, it looks really good if, if it doesn't have any back to it. So if we go ahead and look in the game, we could see that it looks actually really good. It looks like just a floating piece of text. And that's exactly what we want. So we're going to actually copy this. Uh, a couple times so we're going to copy this um, twice so for uh, this one we're going to change it to game two or uh, in this case whatever your game is called and then we're going to change the last one to game three okay just like that and so now if we go ahead and look in the game we have uh, three different options that we can choose from game one game two and game three uh, so now what we're going to do is add the actual selection uh, method. So this uses a black uh, a black box, which is like a silhouette almost. So you guys could see like a visual element of which game you're selecting. So we're going to go to objects, simple objects, and grab a box. And all we're going to do is uh, basically the idea here is we make it the exact um, shape of our uh, text object but we make it just a little bit bigger. So uh, you guys could see that there is a little bit of extra room and that's what's gonna be showing. So we can go to settings for the object and we're gonna make this also 0.10 just because we don't want any back to it. Um, and then we're gonna turn off destructive, destructible, and we're actually gonna be turning off movable because this will be using a uh, teleportation method. Um, and then for color, uh, you guys could of course choose whatever you want, but uh, to keep it simple, we're gonna choose black. Um, so it's just black on white or a white on black, I should say. And then the last thing that we need to do is go ahead and go into uh, switching views. And we can see that our box is actually right exactly on top of our text object. So we're going to move the box just right behind um, our text objects so that uh, you can actually read the text. And there we go. So now if we go ahead and look in the game we could see that we have this little black silhouette of um, behind our text. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is make this a little bigger, just like that, and let's see how that looks. Perfect. So now what we need to do is actually just add the system where this black box switches from either game two, game three, or, you know, it moves, basically. So if we go back to edit... We can go ahead and move this black box over here. And let's go ahead and set up the teleportation. So for objects, uh, go to objects, launch, destroy, attract, and grab teleport object entrance. And we're going to also do the same with the exit. So uh, since there are three options here, um, depending on how many um, options that you guys have or depending on how many different games you want to go to, uh, you need uh, that many amount of entrances and exits for teleporting so uh if we go to copy we can get b and then we get c so for a what we're going to do is um all you have to do is make sure that uh you put the uh, exit directly in the center of uh your uh, text object because that's where it's going to be um that's where the black silhouette is going to be coming um so we have exit a now we just need exit B, and then we just need exit C. 
And what I like to do is also uh, make sure that it's like the same exact size as, um, you know, at the, the same dimensions, at least in the middle. Uh, so where it's teleporting. And now for the uh, box object, we're going to go ahead and uh, copy this teleport entrance uh, three times. So since we have three options, of course, we're going to be needing to change all these IDs to those options. So for uh, teleport, uh, we're going to change this to teleport ID B. And then for this one, we're going to be changing it to C. So now we have A, B, and C. And we can just go ahead and uh, stack them on each other like that. And all we have to do now is connect the black silhouette to these uh, teleport entrances. So um, let's actually move this over a little bit so we can see. Um, so for C, we connect it there. B, we connect it. And then A, of course, we connect it. So pretty much now all we have to do is uh, connect our comparison outputs to A, B, and C. So for the first one, uh, this is for uh, game one. Uh, we connect it to A. And what it does is the uh, the silhouette is actually going to be teleported to game one right behind it. And that's exactly what we want. Uh, game two, B, it will teleport behind B, or game two. And then uh, three, we have to connect it to C, and it will teleport right behind game three right there. Um, and you guys can actually see if we go ahead and uh, press the down D-pad, it actually sends the pulse. You, you, if you guys can see, it's sending the pulse to each of these. So no matter what, uh, if we press down or uh, oh, if we press down, uh, we can continuously uh, keep sending an output to change uh, the teleportation for the black silhouette. So now if we go ahead and look in game, it should actually oh, it should actually work. Um, and it does, except we have a little bit of um, an issue here. And I can actually fix it really quick. Um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go and switch views. So now we're on top-down view. And what we're going to do is grab all of our teleports and move them back just a little bit. Just so that uh, they don't basically interfere with our text objects, if that makes sense. So now if we go ahead and look in the game... We could see it works perfectly fine now. Uh, that's because the teleport isn't attaching to the other text objects. So now we can go ahead and go up or we can go down and we can select either game. Um, and that's exactly how it's supposed to work. So now what we're going to do is uh, just clean this up and we're going to add some other uh, functionality to it. Um, oh, oh, actually, we're going to actually add the selecting uh, feature of it. So if we go back to edit... Uh, let's say that we want to select a game now. Uh, we're going to go to middle, logic, and we're going to get our and nodons. So we're going to copy this twice from that. And we're going to have three of them just because there are three comparisons. Um, and what we're going to do is for the inputs of each of these ands, we're going to connect to each of these comparisons. So for the first one, we're going to connect to that one. For the second one, we're going to connect to the second one. And then the third one, we're going to connect to there. And uh, what we're going to do uh, for the button to select uh, which game we want, we're going to just use A. So go to input and we're going to do, um, oh, not a constant. We're going to go and get a button press of A, just like that. And all we have to do is connect it to uh, each of these inputs like that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, since if we press A on any of these, it will actually go ahead and swap the game. Um, if you guys do not know how a uh, swap game works, I will have a tutorial in the top right. Um, sadly, I will not show it in this because it will uh, dramatically increase the video. Um, so we're just going to go output and I'll show you guys where to connect the swap games. So if we go to swap game, uh, we're going to copy this three times because we have three different games here. And we're just going to connect them directly to the outputs like that. So basically, whatever one we select, uh, you guys could see the little pulse right here where it's um, showing which one to select. Um, no matter where we go, uh, all we have to do is press A, and then it will swap to that game. And that's exactly what we want to do. Um, of course, I have a tutor uh, tutorial on how to do this, but I'll show you guys uh, kind of like a demo of what you have to do. So if you go to settings, 
uh, all you have to do is uh, switch the swap target to whatever game that you want to switch to. Um, and that's pretty much all you have to do. And then for the other game, um, you just have to do and change the, ca the game keyword to the same one as the swap target in this game. Um, I know that's a little bit confusing, but I have a tutorial on it if you guys want to watch it. Uh, but that's pretty much it besides uh, me cleaning up. So let me go ahead and for all the teleport exits, we're going to just make them invisible so that it doesn't show in game. So let's make these all invisible. And then same with the um, entrances, we're going to make these invisible. Just like that. All right. And so now we have a pretty good system. Um, it does look a little bit messy, but um, overall, I think that it should do the job um, if you guys are, you know, coming in this um, project and then switching to another game. Um, so if we go ahead and look back into it, there we go. So now what we could do is uh, we can go up or down. Um, it's a pretty nice looking system and you can go ahead and press A for any of them and then it should switch your, uh, switch your game if you have the swap game set up. And then uh, I think that's pretty much it for this uh, tutorial. Um, I don't think I need to cover anything else besides if you want to add a game screen, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and put it right in the center. Just like that. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. Uh, it's a little bit too close, so we're going to make this game screen a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, of course, you guys could change this and edit it how you would want. Um, and of course, I would change the game one, game two, and game three to whatever games that you're switching to. But uh, I think that's pretty much it for the tutorial. If you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial, um, you know, it would really mean a lot if you guys showed some support, like, you know, liking the video or possibly subscribing to my channel. Uh, but thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in another tutorial. Bye-bye.